Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the RMU Island Sports Complex Center's Clearview Arena for tonight's CHE, or ACHA, excuse me, Division I rivalry matchup between the Kent State Golden Flashes and your RMU Colonials. I'm Caden McCroy alongside me, Andrew Keel. We have a spectacular event going on here tonight for RMU's annual charity night. We do. A lot more, uh, a lot of new faces in the house. Uh, Gino obviously making his return from last year, but Chris Letang, P.O. Joseph will make their debuts here at the RMU Island Sports Center in front of a packed house tonight. A lot of people, more people than most most normal games for sure. I, I don't know about last charity game. I was a little out of town for this <laughs> one, but it's probably more packed than last year. It is remarkable how well this community has responded to this event and absolutely filling the stadium. You could probably have been here at 730 and you'd be close to probably not finding a seat in this arena to be open. We have the band here. We have a uh, Penguins DJ. We have Ryan Mill doing the opening introduction. Phil Bork will hop on the broadcast at some point during the end of this. Um, man, there's just so much going on. We have the gift baskets behind us, the 50-50. All proceeds go to the Ronald McDonald House Cherries. But the game at hand, Kent State and RMU, divisional rivals. We've seen these guys a lot. And, man, it's always a fun one when these two get together. It's always a fun one. It's always going to be... High scoring, high pressure, high intensity, and I don't expect anything different tonight. Going off of Kent State, a remarkable start to the season, an 11-5, 1-1 divisionally. They have not seen a lot of uh, in-conference play quite yet, so this will be a hard task for them at hand. You know, spend a lot of time facing, not saying the record doesn't matter, but, you know, these games are the one that really count in the end. Yes, it is, and for RMU, they're looking at 6-8 and eight right now, 1-2 and two in divisional play, so... Not a great start, but not a horrible start. Definitely something you can bounce back from. Tonight's starter for Kent State, as we know at the moment, will be Nick Beck. 6-4-1, a 3-20 goals against a 9-14 save percentage. He's been the rock that has held this team together for the past couple of seasons. As well as Jack Kinsman, 11 goals, 28 points. Three power play goals puts him fourth in the entire ACHA at the moment, which is a remarkable stat that we saw last year of the likes of Roman Kramer and Justin Adamski. Yes, and for the Colonials in net, it will be Reno Patrick, currently sitting at a 4-2 and two record with 384 save, uh, goals against and an 8 893 save percentage. Also for the Colonials, you want to talk about Gio Palumbo, 20 points so far, still a little bit far behind Kingsman, but also heating up for the Colonials. It's Keith Reed, 13 points this season, and most of them coming in the last five or six games. Colonials have not seen home ice in about a month's time. They went on a very lengthy load trip. Uh, did not obviously go as planned. A lot of injuries played a part of that as well. Saudi Domenico and Matt Perdue both back in the lineup tonight, along with Tyler Draper and George Macrocostas, who both had some hiccups on those road trips as well. On the ice, as we can see the Big Mac white jerseys with the Ronald McDonald house. Remarkably well done. They went with the white this year. Last year was red. But uh, the white ones really, I think, are a very clean look. They've done a remarkable job of putting these together the past two seasons. I gotta, I gotta say, they look better. In yeah. my, in my opinion, I believe these jerseys are better. We'll have a lot of lineup changes to get to for RMU, really switching up the script uh, on this season in the way these lines are constructed. But uh, as we see the special guest on the benches here, we'll have a ceremonial puck drop momentarily. Uh, as we can see of Genny Malkin, uh, Chris, Lee Ta Chris Letang, um, Eleanor Regal from Ron McDonald House, Dr. Michelle Patrick, the president of RMU, and then Pierre Olivier Joseph, and next to him, the captain, Blake Logis, who is on crutches, but good to see he's up and walking around. Good to see he's walking. Executive Officer of Ronald McDonald House Charities of Pittsburgh and Morgantown, 
Eleanor Regal, a name you might be familiar with. We did have her on for an interview last year, and of course, the uh, the PA voice of none other than Ryan Mel to introduce them. And then Dr. Patrick getting the, the stick taps and claps all around the president of this prestigious this university, Ms. Michelle, Dr. Michelle Patrick. And we see Blake Lotus is going to make his way out here. Pierre Olivier Joseph wearing the black beanie, wearing number 73 in Ronald McDonald colors. Great Over to see him here tonight. Chris Letang with a loud round of applause as they get set to do the puck drop here between the captains all around. Gathered there, and then the, uh, the man of the hour gets the next one. And of course, Malkin gets the loudest round of applause, the one to put this event together in partnership with the Ronald McDonald House Charities. For the second straight year, amazing work by him. For Kent State, Zach Zarecki, Jack Kinsman, Tommy Kilway, the captains, part of that ceremony, along with Tyler Draper and George Macrocostas. And now the RMU team will get the picture. And I believe Kent State will. Is if we uh, go off of what happened last year, Mercyhurst did get the picture. Kent State will now, which is also a very cool thing to show uh, respect to the opposing team so they can get their opportunity to take a picture with some of some Penguins greats of all yes, time. Yes, that is great for them. So we'll do one more picture here, and then we will head – downstairs for the National Anthem by Cat Tedder. Uh, Jeff Jimerson just had surgery, so of course could not be here tonight. We wish him all the best in his recovery, you know, the, the legendary anthem voice of the Penguins. But uh, Cat Tedder, also tr truly remarkable singer. She's had uh, a couple appearances here on, on our, our channels. Remarkable job by her. And we'll, we can't wait to listen to her here. So both teams will make their way to their respective benches and get set here for uh, our National Anthem. But Andrew, a truly remarkable ceremony. It's always great to have these guys here in attendance, and man, the crowd's enjoying it, we're enjoying it, I hope you guys are enjoying it, and this is only the beginning of a wonderful night to come. This is only the beginning, this is going to be a great night of hockey, a great game for both sides, both sides need a point in the standings, both teams with only one win, so a win will, whoever wins will jump ahead of each other in the standings. All crucial points at this point, both teams lost to the number one ranked IUP, um, Crimson Hawks, who the defending champions, always tough to play against. So, you know, you want that first round by, you want to avoid IUP as much as humanly possible when we get into these later games. And every game in this situation counts. You can't count out the other teams like Duquesne and Mercyhurst to give you those free wins. Take advantage of the battle in front of you. And right here are two of the top dogs going at it. You got you to take the wins. That's what you need. 
You need to take the hard ones and, and, uh, and steal the easy ones. So going through the lineup, we see a lot of offensive changes. If you're familiar to the channel, uh, you know the lines do not change much at all. But uh, we see Corbin Ragno with David Zerner and Mike Hurst, Gio Palombo with Keith Reed and Sean Patton, uh, Anthony Sheremonti, Garrett Walker, Connor Moran, and then Alejandro Pood with Tyler Draper, George Macrocostis, and Trav er, Travis Colbert. Yeah, Trevor Colbert, excuse me. Kyle Holmes starting on defense, Nick Beck in net. Robbie Sherman, number 25 as well, getting the start on defense. Tommy Kilway, one of the captains starting on forward. Bryson Miller, one of the also top scorers, 15 points this season for number 16 Miller. And Jack Kingsman, as mentioned, fourth in the D1 league in points all around with 28. Now the Colonials. Reno Patrick, the West Virginia transfer in his second year getting a start tonight. Number 17, Tyler Draper. Tyler Draper going back on defense just to start the game, assumingly, since he is on the, uh, the fourth line <laughs> of forward units. And then Rob Byrne out of New York, the junior, starting on defense since his move back to the defensive five, position. George Macker Costas gets a very nice applause here. Another one who really helps set up this event. Gio Palombo, Steve Mears, fan favorite. Wearing 16 and white, the top go-getter for these Colonials. And then the as for mentioned Keith Reed on an absolute roll is Reader. And you best be thinking he's going to be looking for that back on that many times tonight. But here's Cat Tedder with our national anthem. We'll be right back. Cap Tedder with the national anthem. A remarkable job. The lights go out and we're back on. And here we go as we get a little flower presentation here from, from Tyler Draper. A nice hug in the penalty box before we get started here. But also a huge thanks to Ryan Mill for joining us here tonight for the opening introductions. Now he'll pass it over to Philip Pajinski to handle the PA duties for the rest of this one. So here we go. Colonials in golden flashes from the Clearview Ice Arena. Nine, or excuse me, 8.40 Eastern Standard Time. They forgot to change the clocks to the right of us. Yeah, it says 9.40. No fall back on our clock up there. <laughs> <laughs> the clock on the screen says 20, though, in regards to the game clock, and that's the right one that we need for right now. Both teams getting set. Kent State in the blue. RMU in the white cheeseburgers. Let's get going. Macrocostas going up against Kinsman. Charity night puck drop. The crowd on their feet. Stick taps from the benches. A little 4 1 from the referees on something. Maybe just giving a little free game speech. I don't know. Oh, wait on the box here. The medic was getting in. Okay, we're good to go now. Restart that. Here we go. Kingsman and Macrocostas puck down. 
on this charity night event between Kent State and RMU. Reed's going to take that one off the stick behind the net. Nick Beck out to clear that for his defender. Big hit thrown by Gio Palumbo. Turned over to Macrocostas. He's going to go up high to Byrne. Byrne looking down, fires one through, goes past the Nick Beck. Reed along the right wing corner, gets bodied away, and Bryson Miller picks it up. Forward pass to Jack Kinsman. Dangles around, works his way outside, gets taken down hard by Draper. Kent State looks for a call, none will be there, and Byrne's stick goes out, and the puck is in Byrne's equipment. And a little golden flash goes hard into the wall there, Andrew. Yeah, that was a that was a tough one there. Went straight in. I think able to turn his back, so he hit back first, but was not a comfortable landing. Kinsman, the one that that went down. A little confusion between the band and the the, the uh, PA of who is supposed to play music. Yeah. All right, but regardless, we're going to get some line switcheroos. And here we go. Off the draw, Michael Hurst picks it up. He's going to work his way outside along the Kent State bench. Forward for Zerner, couldn't get the cross across. Battling in is Ragno, gets the puck stripped away. Zach Zarecki turns that over to Zerner. Put right back in by Hurst. Out of the net comes Nick Beck to hold it off for the flashes. Puts on the reverse. To the corner, Zarecki clears it out. Turned over, Hurst fires a shot blocked away by J.J. Creighton. Behind the net, this will be picked up by T.J. Avellino. Sends that along the wall. Playing catch between defenders, Zerner or excuse me, Sheramonti, the one providing Chase RMU changing behind the play. Zarecki, forward pass to Fulkowski, throws that in. Patrick, out of his net to hold that one off. Turned over, chance in front off the skate of Zarecki in front. Sheramonti plays catch with Finnegan, turned that one over, Miss Q between the forward and defense. This will roll all the way behind the net. Moran, no one home on that pass. Miscommunication again for these Colonials. And now Hodgson. Looks for the clear, kept the live shot, comes in into the neck area of Patrick. He'll get the stop off the shot from Austin Weber. That one was hard, hit him straight in the gobbler, and you can hear it from here. That's not a good one. Mm -hmm. And luckily that gobbler was there, because if not, that's hitting you straight in the neck. Yeah, that's from experience, that hurts. You don't want that. Oh, no. Thankfully, the, the gobbler plays protective services, uh, secret service on that one. Another quick shot from Weber, gloved away by Mr. Patrick. It's only been a couple of shots, Andrew. Patrick looking tall, though. Uh, had a couple, he had a week off at one point, does come back, had a really solid game, only up two goals to the University of Delaware, and now gets the nod here tonight. Draper looks for the clear, couldn't get it through. In to help there is Di Domenico, looks for the clearing attempt off the wall. He has a Apood up high, he'll pick it up at center. A Apood sends that one on net, Beck with the stop with the glove, he's gonna hold and an offensive zone draw in front of Beck. 18.01 to go in this first period. A lot of whistles early in this game. Slow game so far, I expected to pick up. There seems to be a lot of miscues right now between the, uh, the DJ and the band. So hopefully they get that figured out. Another quick shot off the draw, quickly stopped there by Beck. The green sheet, I guess, is going to be the deciding factor now of who's supposed to play. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it works. I guess so. <laughs> Apood leaves that one off. Shot comes from the point by Di Domenico. That's blocked away. Macker crosses in front. Beck takes a whack at it. And now the flashes look to clear. Draper applying the pressure, makes the hit, sends that one down. Kyle Holmes. Top unit back on here defensively. Holmes looking. Takes his time with this one. Now skates it himself. Goes off the wall. Touched in there by Colpin. He's the one to retreat it down, getting past Di Domenico. Colpin. Hit by Di Domenico, looks to clear it out. Apud is there. Di Domenico lays a huge hit along the wall right to Reno Patrick. And now Di Domenico gets a little bit of extracurricular there, I believe, with 13 uh, Nick Creston. So uh, a little bit of back and forth here, Andrew. I'm not uh, certain what was said there, but something really made Sal Di Domenico tick. Something. Reed on the draw, wins that clean back. Di Domenico along the wall. Patton's the one to chase it down, couldn't get there. Kept alive by Nick Falkowski. Behind the net. Stick is lifted of Rob Byrne, dropping back to defense as of recently for the injured Blake Logis. Reed through center. Goes out wide with the one, takes the shot. Saved by Beck, took a weird bounce up high. Beck lays down, prevent the rebound. That's the kind of bounces that Reed's been getting all, all recently at least. Uh, just not into the net as opposed to how they normally go when they normally go into the net. Quick changes here for Coach Joseph as Ragno's unit hops on with Zerner and Hurst. Ragno couldn't win that one through. Moving forward with this one is Bryson Miller. 
Moves that out wide to Tommy Kilway. Kilway throws it in front. Intercepted by Hurst. Looks for the clear. Fans on the first and second one goes forward to David Zerner as he crosses the blue line. Zerner out wide. Fires one. Tries to go high over the net of Nick Beck. Turned over. Flashes will pick it up at center. They enter the zone. Off the stick of Kilway. Out wide for, excuse me, Miller's shot. Goes into the neck protection of Patrick for the stop at 16.30 of the first period. Yeah, it's been all Kent State, really. Couple of offensive chances for RMU. But Kent State's kind of been rolling right now as the medic is making his way to Kent State really early in this game. That's not what you want to see if you're Kent State. It looks like that is Jack Kinsman reaching up high towards his shoulder area, and that would be a huge loss for these Golden Flashes if he cannot continue here tonight. That'd be a huge loss for sure. Patton Fourth looks in the league in points. You, you, that's hard to replace. We've seen this already with losing Kramer to Damski this year. It's hard to fill that role. Looking to clear this out, Hodgson to Palumbo. Plays that one behind the net. Finnegan leaves it off for Patton, goes through center as he gets hit through center off the helmet of Hodgson on the clearing attempt by Brian Ostershell. Patrick leaves that one off for Finnegan, the sophomore defender for Moon. Looks to clear, kept alive, shot comes in, blockered away by Reno Patrick. Palumbo up to Reed, off the glass, exits the zone, picked up once more by Ostershell, puts on the spin move, and throws that one right back in the Colonial territory. Patrick leaves that off for Finnegan. Sends it off the benches. Back defensively turned over. Patton had to touch up, though, with Walker trailing in. Hodgson at center will pick it up. Skates it through. Sends that one in. Colonials avoid the icing. Back out of his net. Plays that one behind him. Finnegan pinching down. Tries to go to Walker. In front, no Colonials there. Picked off by Hodgson with a stick. Hodgson hard around the wall to Walker. Couldn't handle it. Picked up now by Jonathan Gabriel. Going up against Hodgson as he goes hard, but a hip check comes in of Andrew Finnegan and takes down the mammoth of Jonathan Gabriel. Finnegan forward to the point. Shot comes in. Save made by Patrick. Rebound and a penalty coming up against the Colonials as Gabriel's stick is broken. And now a hit from Gabriel to the back of Walker. But a slash will be called on Andrew Finnegan. I don't believe they're going to get either call or either both sides, my mistake. But Finnegan will go to the box, and we will get a power play for Kent State. Got to say, a beautiful hip check thrown there by Finnegan to the, uh, man, that was just a nuts play there against Jonathan Gabriel. And this Kent State power play, Andrew, has been really well so far this season. 17 power play goals Ooh. for Kent State. Jeez. If I counted correctly, 17 for Kent State. This is a dangerous power play. Gabriel, the one to take the face off, wins that one into the corner. Creston tries to go up high, that'll exit. Going back to retrieve this one's Fulkowski. Out of the net comes back. A uh, little miscommunication again between those two. Fulkowski eventually gets that one. Forward this will go, back to Fulkowski. Sends that one along the wall to Gabriel. Gabriel got some room, works his way in. Stick comes in, Patton prevents the chance to Zarecki. Gabriel works his way down low. He's going to work to the top of the circle. Playing some catch here. Looking for the open shot. It does come through. Saved by Patrick on the attempt from TJ Avellino. It was a good shot, but a great save by Patrick. Seemed a little out of out of position on that one, but still able to get the glove across to make that save. A buck 23 to go on this power play until Andrew Finnegan is set free. Took a two-minute minor for slashing against Jonathan and Gabriel. Both sides make some changes. Clearing attempt could not go on that one from Nathan Isaac. Shot comes in, rebound, slashed at. Patrick holds the wicket shut and gets the whistle on that one. Almost snuck its way through. Thought it did, and Kent State was ready behind him to, if that one just even had a little bit of squeak out of there. Moran, the one to take the draw here, has a couple shorthanded goals to his name so far this season. Uh, has been a really good shorthanded player in open space. Let's see what he got in the tank on this one. The Flash is going to work this one down well to Kilway. Kilway through center, bouncing puck. Rebound is there. Patrick gets across with that one. Clearing attempt by Isaac, kept alive by Creighton. Blocked away. Moran puts it free. Sheramonti got the burners. One on one. Sheramonti dangles through, but the stick comes in of Austin Weber to break it up. Moran tried to get that one. A flash goes going down behind the play. Isaac over to Hodgson and send it the length of the ice to kill off more of that crucial penalty kill. Moran by himself will pick this up. 
Moran into the corner, had Reed trailing. Leaves that one off for him, Reed. Through the middle, Moran's gonna take a line to the bench. Reed the first one to the puck, but body away by Zach Zarecki. Hit thrown by Palumbo. Even numbers coming back with Reed trailing, throwing towards the net, going wide. Hodgson, bodies along with Weber. Mo trying to move that puck along the boards in front of the camera here. Eventually goes out, Palumbo with the clear, he got it. And that'll do it for the Kent State power play. A perfect kill for the Colonials. A great kill there off a gr uh, on a great power play unit. Able to almost get a couple shorthanded to opportunities there. Pass a stick at Purdue. That'll be no icing. Di Domenico got to hurry up. He will get there and move that forward to Purdue, taking a check in the mayhem. That'll be thrown towards center. Picked up by Kyle Holmes. Slowly skates it in, eventually dumps to the corner so his line mates can take a break and head to the bench. Walker, 12.20 to go in this first period of play. Still knotted up at zero between the Flashes and the Colonials. Here's Patton. Enters, goes across, couldn't hit the stick of Walker, turned over, and now the Flashes with the two on two the other way. Matt Parker crunches the man in D. Domenico along the wall. Moving through center, another miscue on that one as Apood tried to hit Walker, turned over, Apood comes in, rebound for Walker, back at it, he scores! Sean Patton! Puts that one on the backhand home. What a goal from the freshman for his fourth of the season to give the Colonials a 1-0 lead. A great rebound there. I don't know if Apood was going for the goal or if he was going for the pass off the pads, but it worked if it was. And a great shot there for Patton. Is he just going to just bury that one in? And where's 1-0 here? Sean Patton has really found his stride here on home ice in the last couple of games. Had uh, his first goal on the road, then he gets one right back here in the game, I believe, against George Mason, and then one against John Carroll. Man, he's really starting to find his groove. one nothing RMU, just under the 12-minute mark as a flash almost takes out Reno Patrick. Going across the hearse, Zerner takes a hit. Rebound comes in by Ragno, almost puts that one through. Towards the newt, net turned over. Kilway at center. Works this one forward. Kilway tried to dangle, couldn't get that one through. Turned over. Burn. Off to Hurst. Avoids a hit. Turned over to Kilway. And we'll send that one on that to Patrick. Still no sign of Jack Kinsman on the ice as of recently here. Well, something to keep an eye on moving forward in this game. I do see him on the bench without his chest protector on, holding his shoulder still. So, not good. Not a good sign if you're Kent State. Yes. Ragno and join the hit along with Byrne. Eventually squeaks out. Ragno to clear goes to Zerner. Zerner goes off the boards. Hurst just sends that one in. The Colonials can change a full sail change. A quick pass up to Zarecki. Zarecki at center. Sends that one off the stick of Hodgson into the corner. Hodgson. If we look at this, Apud right back on the ice. Coach Joseph loves what he sees at a 21 right now. Alejandro Apud de la Fuente out of Mexico City. Has been quiet on the score sheet as of late. Until tonight, he gets that assist. That might be something that will uh, continue to boost his confidence, especially with these lines constantly juggling. Here's Hodgson. Goes across to Finnegan. Gets center, dumps that in, hits someone on the Kent State bench, and we'll get a whistle dead at 10-22. After I say, right after I say Kent State's had a lot of the momentum, Colonials have taken the momentum right back. Kent State has not had anything in a while. It's been all Colonials for a while. Walker's unit, the one to come on now. Colbert to his left. And Moran to the right. As mentioned, Moran, the shorthanded beast, two goals on the season, shorthanded this, thus far for him. Walker keeps that alive. Moran takes some time, goes across the Walker, fires one, goes wide of the net of Nick Beck. Coming down defensively, trying to go around to Walker. Walker behind to Colbert. Finnegan picks this up towards the net. Rebound is there. Blocker save by Nick Beck. And now Kilway. Gets around one towards center. Pass goes off the stick of Lucchese. Now Gabriel dangles to the backhand. Pad save by Patrick. Kohlberg off the wall to Moran. Now to one touch to Kohlberg. Excuse me, Hodgson. Hodgson out wide. Couldn't get the pass across. Gabriel looks to retreat back. Two Colonials in the way. Turned over. And now Matt Parker leads the rush for Kent State. Finnegan lifts the stick. Gives it off to Keith Reed. He's going to settle the pace here a little bit. And now works his way forward. Cross his own blue line. Now center. Colonials changing behind the play. Reed shot. Pad save by Beck. 
flashes look to clear. Purdue at center, avoids the hit, and now can put this one in to the Kent State zone. Beck tries to reverse. Looks to clear. Off the netting here, almost towards the band. Almost hit the, net, the, uh, the netting on that one here, Andrew. As we have a little. You. Hey, come on. So I got a special guest joining us now for uh, the last couple minutes here, this first period. I'll give him a second to get settled. In the meantime, the flashes look to clear this one out. They're going to get that one towards center. And Phil Bork, welcome to the broadcast. All right, man. I'm loving this. This, uh, this game has got a great pace to it. I'm loving this hockey. It's quick, it's brutal, and it's fun. <laughs> that's the that's the fun of RMU Club hockey here. It's the first time I believe you've seen one of these games before? It is the first time. I didn't know what to expect. It's better hockey than I thought. Um, but you're right. It's a bit of fire wagon hockey, right? Yes. Uh, you know, the defense is kind of secondary, and that's okay. Um because you just go for it. And the one thing I noticed right away, okay, maybe the skill isn't there, the execution isn't, isn't perfect uh, as much, but the speed is there. A lot of speedy guys. A lot of speed, and there's a beautiful reverse hit from the flashes against Corbin Ragno as there's a battle going on right in front of the Colonial Band. Uh, Mr. Berg, obviously the flight coming in from L.A. You got to be a little tired after that one. You only got in a couple hours ago. Yeah, actually, I took the red eye last night ah. uh, from LAX. I got the 1.15 a.m., so I have not slept at all. <laughs> so I will sleep like a baby uh, tonight. But, uh, yeah, I have a little girl that uh, turned three years old today, and Daddy better get home for that one. So I took the red eye. Got to. Well, happy birthday. Yeah. Was, uh, she might be it here. Was it was worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So here's Draper going to work down. Fires that one. That'll go off into the netting 7.53 to go in this first period. We'll go back to that first goal board. I don't know if you did see it or not, but. Uh, I missed it. So yeah. it was a, a rebound in front, wide open backhand beauty into into the back, but. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what level you're talking about. Uh, so many times, it's not the first shot that goes in, right? I, I say this on the Penguins broadcast, especially that power play. It's about getting the shot on the net and the, sh the shot on the net with a purpose, right? You hear about shot off the pad. It's, it's a very effective play. He has a great chance down the left wing. Here comes Lucchese onto the forehand, taken away by the defense. Rebound is there off the mask of Patrick, turned over and swatted away by Nathan Isaac. Did he try to make that save with his head? I think so. He My put his head forward into that. Gracious. Draper forward to Macrocostas, and he'll send that one on net, bouncing towards Beck. He will cover that one up. Reno Patrick, known for his aggressive play style <laughs> as a goaltender, really showing that one off there. That actually reminded me of Henrik Lundqvist. He was one goaltender, obviously, with the New York Rangers. That pucks would come at him right forehead high. Instead of getting his glove up and grabbing it, you know, I Swedish, probably loved playing soccer, headers, right? <laughs> that he would just use his noggin and just clear it away into the corner using his head. Another one up into the screen here, face off to the right. Yeah, I think the band got to be a little worried if there wasn't any netting on this uh, on this rink. I'm glad you brought up the band because I grew up in Boston. My dad went to mm. BC, so I went to a lot, a lot of BC Eagle games. Then we went to a lot of BU games. Yep. Also, I lived close to Merrimack College, so I went to a lot of college games, and that's the one thing I identify. As soon as I walked into this building, the band, it's just it just adds to, you know you're at a college hockey game, right? right? It's a great atmosphere, and the band makes it. Just makes it that much more fun. And uh, just the amount of Penguins in this arena here tonight between yourself and there's a hit thrown by Macker, or excuse me, Sheramonti into the wall. But Gino, P.O., Latang, Ryan Mill, Iceberg. How cool is it to see a lot of, you know, college people you call games for here to you support know, it, a club It was great. You're, you're right, because everybody has a soft spot. We know what happened with uh, RMU hockey, and everybody has a soft spot for it. And, and if you can, then do it. I mean, that's also the Penguin way. It all started with Mario. And a shot come in here. We're going to face off. We can talk for a little bit. Yep. But Mario is the one that kind of led the way, you know, that part of being a Pittsburgh Penguin. And, you know, if you get your contract out, it doesn't say on your contract that you have to do this and nope. do that. You just do it because that's what you do as a Pittsburgh Penguin. We're a big city, but we're also a small city, right? right. The people appreciate it. And, you know, it's a business. You're not doing it for that reason. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Uh, but it, it does help your brand. It does help your image. Um, but guys now know when they put that black and gold jersey on, part of it off the ice is to do the right thing and, and to have the guys that you just mentioned here for, for a really good cause in the Ronald McDonald House. It's, it's the right thing to do. 
Absolutely isn't. It's great to see it always growing. Last year it was only Gino and, and Mirzi, and now we expand it to more players, more media outside. And man, what, what they've been able to do this year has been quite remarkable. Here's a chance in front right there to read that one is Patrick on the doorstep. Now, did Mirzi come on the air with you? Yes, he did. Okay. He didn't uh, do any game commentary, but, you know, intermission, yeah. interview, why not? I was going to bust his cookies and say, you know, why didn't you go on? Were you big league in the boys? Like, <laughs> But he, he came on. Yes, he yeah, did. Yeah, he's a he small did. guy. Yeah. He, he had to. He can't say no to me. No, I, you know what? I really enjoy working with Josh Getzoff. We built up uh, a, a great rapport and a chemistry. Uh, I also have that with Steve Mears. Uh, if you know, I'm going to do 12 games on TV yes. this year, so I'm really looking for that. Forward to that. Uh, my first game will be the 22nd of this month. That's a game right before Thanksgiving. Look out! Here comes Patton. Missed on the backhand attempt, trying to open up Nick back. Patton looking for a second of the game, and there will be a Kent State icing in result. Yeah, Patton coming in, clear cut breakaway, right hand shot. Looked like he wanted to sell the shot yes. really hard, then get it to the backhand, then looked like he wanted to take it over to the forehand and drag it around the left pad. But when he went for that final move, he just dumped it in the corner. So the so, uh, the hands are going a little bit faster than the feet there. Palumbo wins back to Finnegan, tipped in front, rebound comes out, trying to go across the reed, could not hit on that attempt. But man, the Colonials have got a lot of pressure here these last couple of minutes, really turned the intensity on uh, since the first couple of minutes where Kent State really controlled the game. Well, because they know uh, I'm begging for one of your goal calls. <laughs> I want hopefully, the A game. Hopefully we can uh, get the goal call here in the next five minutes and 20 seconds of this first period with RMU leading one to nothing. Here's Kent State looking to clear this one out, playing some catch between the defense. Now we'll move this one out. Trying to get around one, goes towards the boards, pressured there by Gio Palumbo. Fan favorite of Steve Mears, actually, a family friend as well. Oh, okay. Had uh, two goals for Mearsy last year until he left at the end of second remission. Of All course, right. did not finish off the hat trick as soon as Mearsy left the building. <laughs> a little coincidence? I think not. I think not. <laughs> Finnegan well, yeah. turns over in front, Patrick right there to cover up the damage, prevent the rebound. Yeah, well, I mentioned the speed, but also the physicality, right? It, it's yes. all there. Um, and some people, they kind of roll their eyes when it comes to club hockey. But, you know, for a lot of these guys, this is it, right? Mm -hmm. After club hockey, it's probably not going to be a whole probably lot. After it. that, go out in the real world, right? Yep. You start a family, get a job. And so I think a lot of the guys that are out here, um, they're playing for fun. Uh, but they're also, they're playing for real. Like this, this is important to them. And you can see the, the intensity is there. Draper looked to turn around, gets checked behind the play. Kent State with some speed going towards center. Creighton turns that over to Alejandro Apud, native of Mexico City, Mexico. Wow. In his second year here with the Colonials, on the Mexican national team, 18U. Shot comes in, saved by Beck. Beyond that to Draper. He played in L.A. last night. The defenseman's last name was Spence from yes. Australia. Jordan Spence. Hip check thrown there. Puck comes loose behind the net to Purdue. Purdue holds. Turned over to Jonathan Gabriel. 6'6 six, six on skate, or probably 6'8 on skates. Oh, yeah. It's 27 in blue. Back to retrieve this one is Robbie Sherman. Sends that one forward. Couldn't hit the stick of his trailing forward. And now Walker. Couldn't get it through. Purdue puts that one in. Possibly looking for a change. Denies it. Beck turns. Throws it over to the defense and Holmes. Pass forward. Comes through in the stick of Purdue knocks it free. Sharamonti forward to the speedy walker. Back to Sharamonti, loses an edge. Flashes will pick it up. We got 3.30 to go in this first period. Di Domenico looks to line up his hit. Does get it off. Rebound comes free. Defensive Kent State there. One timer fired and block. blocked away by Sharamonti. Paying the price. Off the skate. Of Di Dominica putting on a little soccer skills we touched on earlier. <laughs> Instead of the header, this time it's the it's the keep up drill. <laughs> Hurst circling. Goes for the wraparound. Rebound is there. Back clears. Shot comes in off the deflection of Hurst and wide. Into the far corner. Ragno. In there with Moran. Puck taken down in front. Hurst walks in, fires back save, coming oh. way out of his crease. Aggressive. That, one. that is aggressive, confident save to keep it one nothing. No icing. Patrick goes back into his crease, leaves it off for his defenseman. 2.35 to go in the first period. 1-0 RMU in this intense rivalry matchup between Kent State and the Colonials. Oh. Ragno turning to his back. Almost pulled it off. 
Oh, and a stick incredible. broken. He used the heel of a stick to pin the puck to the ice, and then they spin a rama at the same time. That would have been incredible if he pulled that off. We had someone last year by the name of Roman Kramer pull it off Whoa. on home ice last year so against good. these flashes as well. I like the creativity. I just like the, the ability to think it and try it. So why not? You have the space to do it. Let's see what you can do with it. Here's Rob Byrne. Forward turn, defenseman moves that back to Keith Reed. Reed walks down, fires across over the net. Reed in front. Back to the point. Isaac fires one from way out wide. Palumbo in front, fires over the net. Hits an net, it's in. That was almost a gimme, rolling off the stick of Palumbo. He picks it up in center, but gets that taken away by Tommy Kilway. Kilway, the alternate captain, moves that along to MJ Markwicks from way out wide. Save made by Patrick. A buck 30 to go in this first period of play. Joined by Phil Bork, if you're just tuning us, the color commentary of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Here's Sean Patton. Dangles to the backhand, couldn't get around that one. That's his oh. reverse hit and a beauty from the freshman, Sean Patton. Here's the other way, it's TJ Avellino from out wide, blocked by Finnegan, rolls behind the net. And stick lifted there as Kent State fires one on. Rebound is loose, taken out. Hodgson turned over to Zarecki. One minute remaining. One minute to go, and we get it whistled dead, and I believe we have a penalty here, Borky. We do. Let's see if they might take, it's going to be a slashing and a cross check. I think they're going to take both. Okay. So it'll be Hodgson. And it looks like Mitch Gillespie, the ones to take a seat. So we're going to see some four on four. That's okay. A little more ice, a little more action, a little more speed. Slash the Hodgson, cross check to Gillespie for this last 58.2. You said you want to go. I think this is the prime time to get it. All right. We got, you got 58.2. And then I'm heading home to my baby girl. Yes. So let's get Enjoy a the G birthday. and let's get, let's get a goal <laughs> Got it. How's we got to say real quick, how's Dylan doing? I know he's playing up in, in the yeah, Long Island. My son Dylan, he's a 17-year-old goalie playing for the Long Island Gulls. And uh, he's got his hands full of three goalies, which is never a good situation. Mm. Uh, but it is what it is. He's battling his butt off, and it's big big boy hockey up yes. there. You know, they, they're, uh, they were just recently ranked fifth in the country. They wow. had a bad weekend last weekend. They dropped the seventh, no big deal. Uh, but they're legit. It's a, it's a team that uh, if you follow uh, 18U hockey, AAA hockey, um, it's Long Island Gulls are, are the real deal. Got to see Dylan play a lot in the GOAT 44 League. Definitely yes. one of the star players, in my opinion, of the entirety of that uh, whole summer tournament. No surprise, Shattuck St. Mary's is the number one team in the country. That's not a shocker yeah. at all to me. <laughs> Here we go. Off the wall, Hurst got some room. Hurst out wide, fires one. That'll go wide of the net. On to chase is Zerner. Zerner keeps that alive. Leaves that one off for Hurst. We got 30 seconds to go. Hurst towards the net. Rebound, no one home to pick that up. Looking for the clear. Goes through center, lined up with the hit is Purdue. And another hit thrown by Zerner, table topping one of the Kent State players. Creighton, bodied away, 15 seconds now in this first period. Purdue goes out wide, Zerner wanted to change, and Kent State with a light pressure coming, and Purdue takes his man down. Five seconds in Florida, unfortunately we're not going to get the, uh, good. the goal call unless we see a knuckle puck all the way down from the blue line, Borky, but... That's fine. Hey, first period, we got one goal. Of course, you missed right right it's, after they that's scored. Okay. I was chatting in the corner in the uh, the hat trick club room there, so uh, I enjoyed this. This was fun, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you Thank you for coming. Solid game, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. All the best, and uh, let's go Colonials, man. Bring it home. Phil Bork, ladies right. and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming. I can't wait to hear you tomorrow night when uh, the Penguins take on the Sabres. Penguins and Sabres, man. Let's get it on. Let's pack the house. It should be a good one Saturday night in the Berg. Absolutely. Phil Bork, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to step aside here. We're going to step aside here in a moment. Um, we got 15 minutes of intermission time ahead of us. A minute two of four on four, and we come back. Kent State and Colonials. Hi, everybody. It's Caden McCrory back with the intermission interview with Miss Eleanor Regal. Eleanor, for the second straight year, we have the Ronald McDonald House Charities, our charity of choice. And I feel like we've did even bigger and even better than last year. Absolutely. And we are thrilled to be part of this event. Um, it really means a tremendous uh, impact and makes a difference to what we do every, and every day for our families. This year, more than just Evgeny Malkin, we got Chris Letang and P.O. Joseph. 
I, I think that's one pretty good way of uh, trying to expand the, the totals from last season. Oh my gosh, yes. And I, I think that speaks volumes as to what your community has done here to bring awareness to this charity game, to bring awareness to Ronald McDonald House. And it says a lot about those players. If you know, they flew back from the West Coast, yep. so they have to be tired. And they gave up their time tonight for something very special, RMU and Ronald McDonald House. Last year's total was pretty remarkable. This year, what's the expected total at the moment, if you do know? I actually do not know, but the coach told me they're going to try to beat what they did last year, which I believe was $10,000. Yes. So that's incredible. Um, every amount, uh, it doesn't really matter what the amount is mm. because everything that is done tonight will make a difference and have a significant impact on the families that we serve. We do have a link in our YouTube bio to donate to the Ronald McDonald House Charities, but if you do not know, Ms. Regal, tell us a little bit about what the Ronald McDonald House Charities provides. Sure, so the Ronald McDonald House provides a place for families to stay while they are seeking medical care for their children. But it's more than just a house. Uh, we have two locations, one in Pittsburgh and one in Morgantown. And we really think about the daily essentials, providing a hot meal for the families, and then also providing a safe environment. So that's a little bit what we do. We try to focus on the families because truly we're blessed in our community, both in Morgantown and Pittsburgh, there's excellent medical care. So the house concentrates on mom and dad, the siblings, the grandparents, um, the p support system for the patient. And so I'm really, I'm so grateful for the team that I work with because each and every day they make a difference. Yep. And uh, that's tremendous. In addition to our houses, we have the Caremobile. And we partner with Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. They provide all the clinicians. Um, and we have well visits and dental care and vision and hearing screenings. And it goes out throughout the community and provides this care free of charge for families for children that otherwise would not have this care. So it's a tremendous program and we really are blessed to have those clinical partners. We couldn't do that without that. And yeah. so when I think about tonight and I think about everything we do, it happens because of the community, whether it's RMU's community, the parents that support all the students, the students are just tremendous. The hockey's awesome. I'm a huge hockey fan. It so all works. Is, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is awesome. And it was great to have uh, Mr. Malkin, Mr. Wachang, and Mr. Joseph here to really promote what we do. And really, as a tribute to all of you and what you're doing to help our families. So, can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for all that you do and for coming on here today. My final question for you is, as you said, a big hockey fan. What is your prediction for the final of today's contest? Oh, we're going to win. Use. Sorry, Absolutely. State, but yeah, you got to go home. Sorry, we're going to crush it, right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love it, honestly. But ladies and gentlemen, Miss Eleanor Regal from the Ronald McDonald House Charities, thank you again for everything that you do, and uh, hopefully we can beat the total of 10,000 from oh, last that'd year. that would be awesome. Yes, thank you. Caden McCroy, we're going to head back to another quick intermission. We'll see you guys in about six and a half minutes for period two of Kent State and RMU. We are back with the second period of play between the Golden Flashes and the Colonials. Cade McCrory alongside Andrew Keel. Uh, the shots here. Hold on, we got a lot of, a lot of paper mixing up here. <laughs> I didn't get to see the shots. Well, we're going to assume a lot to a lot, I guess. Yes. I don't know about that one here, Andrew, but welcome back. Uh, Thank you. The full book thing was unexpected, honestly. I didn't yes. know he was coming right then and there, so sorry about that. Yeah, I saw him standing there, and I was I, I tried to signal you earlier, but I didn't. saw him, but I waited until the end of the play. Yes. So, of course. That's when know. I really, you know, <laughs> gave you the signal that he was coming. Yeah, and he wanted to get out of here. You know, it's always birthday. Happy birthday to, to baby Bork turning three years old today. But we got some floor and floor hockey to get back to here. Let's roll. Keith Reed's going to win this draw back. It'll be him, Byrne, Isaac, and Palumbo for the Colonials RMU in the white. Kent State in the blue. Nick Beck will make the stop. Andrew, I'm not sure if we have any update on Jack Kinsman at all. Uh, I did not see him come out, I don't believe, for uh, the second period. I don't see him on the bench either. So unfortunate news for Kent State, but fortunate for RMU because now you're not, you're not uh, facing number four 
in league. Here's Gio. Palumbo got some room. Palumbo coming down, fires one, and there's going to be a possible penalty shot. Let's see. Are they going to give him the penalty? Oh, we got an extra. Kent State, I think, someone with the extra penalty here, Andrew. I believe so. Beck's down. He's a little slow to get up. Something you mentioned to me beforehand but did not mention during the game was uh, RMU's really had Beck's number mm -hmm. in they recent have. games. So that could be something soon. Hodgson's in the box here. Oh, I'm sorry. He was, he was in already the in the box. Sorry. I look down and I see a couple people in the box. So no penalty shot. But will there be two penalties on the call against the Flash's player? I did not catch who uh, was the one to take him down. Andrew, can you get a good look here? I can try. I cannot see back to back is to the uh, the board. So ah, great. unable to see. So we'll we get that from Phil Vichensky. Yeah. Vichensky will give us the, the extra love and that we, we need to, to make this call correct. But Army's going to have a four on three for the next 25 seconds. Let's see what they do. Maybe Tommy Kilway, the alternate captain on the penalty. Walker over to Hurst. Hurst looking up high. Throws towards the net off a skate. Walker has to go retrieve. He will send that one down to Zerner. Zerner up high to Walker. Walker down to Zerner. A little out of his reach. Ragno behind the net will pick it up. Ragno holding. Goes across, pad saved by Beck. Both men set free off the four on four. And RMU will have a power play for the next minute and 30. Draper hops on for Hodgson. Same unit will stick here for these Colonials. Here's Hurst. Goes through center, off wide to Corbin Ragno. Ragno with some speed. Works his way behind the net. Ragno puts on the brakes, gets crunched along the wall there by Brian Ostershell. Up high to Hurst. Hurst looking, goes across for Walker in the lane with Mitch Gillespie to break that one up. Patrick way out of his net with a flash coming, but clears it out of harm's way forward to Michael Hurst. Hurst, Ragno, Ragno trying to spin away. That'll go towards the Colonial bench and out the Colonial power play, having some struggles trying to get set up. Walker, patient behind his own net, will give this one off to Zerner. Zerner gets across center. Now across the blue line on his backhand. He's going to circle behind the net with this one. Zerner looking. Has a man up high in Finnegan. Across to Hodgson. 25 seconds to go on the penalty to Kilway. Hodgson hold it. Up high to Finnegan. Shot comes in. Rebound for Reed. Holding. Goes up high. Fired by Hodgson. Rebound in front. Beck makes the stop. And now Macrocostas gets a little feisty with Zach Zarecki in front of the net. They're going at each other verbally after a little physical altercation. Mac Crosses may have thought that was loose, may have just been uh, being a little pest trying to push uh, the, a goalie into the net as there's going to be a conversation about that push exactly. A couple of flashes in there to, to discuss, but the, uh, the extra couple of wax were not taken too lightly by the flashes. Looking to clear his crate, and Finnegan stepping down. Holds that one in. Looks for the clear or the flashes. They got it, and that'll trickle all the way down and kill off the remainder of the penalty to Tommy Kilway. Hodgson is going to leave this off to Finnegan. Officially even now. Finnegan off to Reed. Forward pass. That'll go right on net, though, to Nick Beck, and he'll cover with Palumbo skating his way down. 17-16 to go. Uh, no team really has had the, the maintained pressure that we kind of saw in that first period. No, it's been back and forth most of the time, although Colonials have had the puck in the offensive zone a lot. That's just because they've been on the power play. So they've only they, that's, that's really all you got. And Kent State's not going to have many throw-handed opportunities. Walker's even the one to come out. Sean Patton, Andrew, uh, had a couple of good looks earlier on in the game. There's a shot in front. Walker rebound. Sharon Monty with a whack and eventually... Uh, Moran gets shoved out of the crease of Beck. But going back to Sean Patton, had that breakaway, lost it coming down, had another one-on-one -on -one chance. Sean Patton has really emerged, emerged excuse me, as one of those under-the-radar players that we definitely got to keep an eye on throughout the rest of this game. Patton has looked really strong this game. That is definitely for sure. Looking to clear this out. Or the flash is turned over at the blue line. Sharamonti to Walker. Walker will send that one in. This line has a ton of speed, Andrew, between Moran, Walker, and Sharamonti. All can really get moving on their skates to, to get some loose box. Shot by Walker, blocked away. Sharamonti is going to send this one down behind the net to Moran, up forward to Sharamonti. Rolling behind the net, Moran up high. Walker looking, firing. 
Off the blocker, rebound coming across was Beck. Open net, couldn't wrap around was Moran, the Kent State defense, playing some goalie on there. Here's Hodgson dancing, looks for an open lane, goes across for Moran, couldn't hit. Back goes to Finnegan, down low to Moran once more. Moran through traffic, turned over, Kent State looks to clear, kept alive for the moment, and now comes out. 16.20 to go in the second period, 1-0 Colonial still. Off the skate of Moran. Eventually does go in. All three forwards will go for a change. Hodson and Finnegan will hold the fort in the meantime. Looking to clear. With some speed now are the flashes off. The referee in the lane was right along the Chick-fil-A Robinson sign and was not moving at all on there. And that should be an icing. Whoa, that was, I don't think that would, uh, that should have been uh, called off. <laughs> Andrew, uh, didn't I, I believe it should have. Really? Yes, because Nick Beck came out of his crease. Um, after the fact, because he saw the wave. No. Really? That was the uh, uh, official call from the ref is that, it was called off because Beck left his crease. Wow. Okay. I, saw, I looked right at him when he did it. That is surprising to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Beck left his crease because that should have been an icing. He I was way behind the red line. I but have no idea. Hey, you can't – I, I would say let's get in the mind of a goalie, Andrew, but I feel like uh, you're the one. You see a puck come at you and you just say, yeah, no, nah, I'm not touching that. Hey. Okay. That's just a little jab for fun, you know. Yeah. Nothing crazy, but, you know, as a goalie, you want to avoid seeing the puck as much as possible, yeah. I, I would assume. So yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Here's Burns, he's gonna throw that one back in. As we mentioned a couple times, the, the New York junior defenseman, once was forward, now back in defense in, in lieu of the injury to Blake Logis uh, a month back against George Mason. Moving forward are the flashes, they're gonna move this out wide, shot comes in, Patrick lays down the rebound, and Ragno closes off the man, and Ostershell crashing in. Going back to that last conversation. Very much a uh, stay-at-home, I don't want to go outside my crease unless I really have to. Yes. Goaltender. Uh, Nathan Isaac applying the pressure, gets caught, and now a chance for Gabriel off the post. Colonials thanking their lucky stars on that because Jonathan Gabriel had Reno Patrick beat on that shot attempt. Here's Tommy Kilway. Loses that one, turned over. That'll go towards the wall, towards Alejandro Apud who does not get center line, but it does not matter as Kent State's defense is back to avoid the icing. Kilway off the skate of Gabriel, gets around Isaac. Gabriel in front, couldn't complete the pass on that one. With some speed, Macrocostas has some room, but that'll be shoveled off, off the stick of Nick Falkowski, and back will hold as him and J.J. Creighton get into a little stick battle behind the play. It looks like Falco or excuse me, Creighton, a little uh, bent over. I don't know if maybe the butt end of the stick might have got into the lower midsection of uh, of Creighton. Possibly? If I had to guess, that'd be what it was. Yeah, just As that one hurts. Yes. a lot. Protection or not, you do not want that uh, going anywhere near your lower midsection whatsoever. No. Purdue, back to retrieve this one. Puts on the burners. Will be the first back, looks to clear it around. There's the aforementioned Sean Patton. Gets a handle on it and throws it to center. Patton up to his fourth goal of the season, assisted by Alejandro Apu de la Fuente of Mexico City as the lone goal in this contest. Behind the net's Avellino in front, coming down, shot comes in, saved by Patrick. Way out of his crease to make that stop. Patrick looked at his glove like, oh, there it is. <laughs> A little surprise. Def deflected off his stick right into his glove. So, I don't know if a little luck there or just as he designed, but great save there by Patrick. Patrick and the the linesman really getting in, into the groove here of the uh, the band playing. Patrick doing a little head shakes to, to bop along. You know he <laughs> loves to have some fun while he's on the ice. Has had a, a really good showing so far here today. Look at the official shot total at the end of the second period, thanks to Connor Borsch, our stack guy. Yes keeping track of who shot the puck as well, along with plus minuses. He's really putting in the work to the yeah. help make this broadcast better. Wish we could have him for every game. That would be nice. Maybe we will. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Peyton Nurse is uh, his mini-me, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Turned over behind the net. Purdue will pick it up, and we'll send that one down. That should be an icing, and it will be with 13-14 to go in this second period. Beck knows not to leave his crease on that one. I wonder if his defensemen are like, Nick, 
what are you doing? He was like, I just want to play the puck, man. I just want to play the puck. Let me go. That one, he was like, no, you stay. Stay there. Let me get it. Get the ice, and we'll go back in our offensive zone. We're down by one. We need this. Off the draw, Purdue looks to clear, has enough to get out, and now Walker leading the rush for the Colonials out wide. Fires, rebound is loose. Couldn't get there were his fellow line mates. Sheramonti sends along the glass, bouncing towards the net. Moran took a whack at it, couldn't get it past Nick Beck. Di Domenico standing at the blue line, couldn't keep it alive. And now Walker will shovel off the blocker of Nick Beck. Finishing off the check is Pol er, Sheramonti. I gotta say, from out far, Sheramonti and Palumbo look vastly similar in both play style and because of the bubble. <laughs> and also their numbers beginning with one. So I, I guess take as a compliment, Anthony Sheramonti. Yeah. I mean, playing like the, the top go getter on the Colonial offense, Gio Palumbo, is 20 points on the season now, just I believe uh, less than 15 points away from 100 career. So that will be a remarkable milestone if he does accomplish this season, hopefully on home ice. Uh, that would be something really cool to see in only his third full season, I would say. And there's a shot comes in and rolls towards Nick Beck. Talking about Palumbo a little bit here, Andrew. Not known to score a lot of goals. You know, you got to learn your ranks. And I know Patrick is pretty, you know, he's played here enough times already to figure out that I can't push off my pegs like I could in other arenas. Up high, the shot comes in. Stop made, rebound, an extra couple whacks are not taken lightly. And Palumbo quickly out of there, but Hodgson and Patton take down a flash and a couple other bodies in front of Patrick, and he is not too thrilled. As the puck made its way into the ice. After the whistle. After, after the whistle. whistle. And also wouldn't have been called anyway due to goaltender interference. Yeah, but there's a lot of bodies on top of Leonard Patrick. There's a lot of bodies. No chance. As that was almost definitely a goaltender interference. But because the whistle blew, the Colonials are going to have a defensive faceoff as opposed to a middle of a, a – uh, you know, a central center, yeah. center ice face off if it would have been called for goal interference. So a, a kind of unfortunate call. Yeah. Here's Gabriel toe dragging, but the stick of Sheramonti breaks it up and he throws a check against Gabriel. Shot comes in loose off of Hodgson. He'll collect it and move forward to Connor Moran. Moran looking for Walker. Couldn't complete the pass. Sheramonti working down low. Stick goes flying off of, a, of Jonathan Gabriel. A little bit had two sticks on him for a little bit. <laughs> See how that strategy would have worked out. We've seen the ref with the stick. We've seen a player with a goalie stick. We haven't seen a player with two sticks in quite some time. We've seen a goalie with a player stick. We've seen that as well. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Here's Hodgson leading the rush. Hodgson on the right circle works down. Goes across. Coming in is Finnegan. Finnegan sends that into the far corner. Down is Moran, loses it, clearing attempt, will go for the flashes, but will this be an icing? No, it will not. Hodgson back to retrieve, 5.40 to go in the second period, still 1-0, the lone goal from Sean Patton in RMU, his fourth of the season from Alejandro Apuk. Hodgson on his backhand, sends that behind, Beck out of his craze. Draper gets a chop at it and an extra whack from Beck. And only a warning. I'm a little shocked about that, the way this game has been going, that they're not uh, going to start picking up the penalty base. I feel like that will be the last one. I yeah, feel like that has to be. From now on, it's going to be a lot more strict, I believe. I will say a good job by Draper holding up. He did not run the goaltender. He went right in front of him and stood there. He gave him a little bit of a whack yeah. with a stick, but that was stick on stick action. So. Lucky, yeah, Lucky, you do not need a goalie interference call in that nature of running the goaltender because, of course, we would then get another Mercyhurst incident. We do not want that no. this year. Please, please don't do that this year. <laughs> I like having our streams up, so please don't. We just... Here's Ragno, backhand attempt, right through back, loose. And the puck is taken right back, but Macrocostas is going to finish his check, and we're going to get a tie-up. Andrew, you can uh, take a couple seconds here if you need. No, nah, okay. Macrocostas up high, fires water right off the post. Would have been sweet honey if he buried that one, especially with how much he's done for this charity event. Byrne turns it over to be one-on-one. -on -one. Byrne will get back. Leading the rush here is Nick Creston, but nice job by Nate Isaac to close off a lane on that one. And will this be an icing? No. no, it will not. One ref said yes, one said no. 
the, the eventually both said first no. First ref said no, so. Yeah, the one over here said no. The one over here said yes. That one said no. The far side said no. Okay. I'll say the low one said yes for the moment until uh, right before. Shot comes in. Patrick gets a hold of that one. It'll go up high now to Fulkowski. <coughs> Down low to Lucchese. Holding. Loses a hold of it. Goes up high now to Falkowski. Shot comes in, blocked away for the moment, and wide of the net. Makarakostas went down. Finishes his check along the wall against Falkowski as those two wrestle. Isaac's clearing attempt off Hurst. Kept alive by Creighton at the top of the left circle. Off a point shot. Deflected and denied by Reno Patrick. Great save. I mean, obviously the answer is get a goal. Of course. But if you're not getting a goal, definitely not shooting the puck up to us. That's definitely not going to help. Is, uh, we have a golden flash down on the ice. A good look. Seems like everyone's good to go, that which, is, which is good that, to see. That's good to see. Behind him, that Di Domenico gets tied up. Are they going to call Di Domenico for this? Wow, okay. Di Domenico is going to head to the box. I would say that was... Could be the other zone. because I sure. would think it would be the other zone. I believe first Kent call was on Kent. I believe the first call was on Kent. So Puck should be on the other side. I don't know, but regardless, we got four and four for the next little bit. Gabriel gets tied up. No stick here for Hodgson. And looking to clear out a share of Monty locked down by Kilway. Kilway to Gabriel, broken up. Share Monty. Embellishment. Ooh. I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't like that one. We got to look that one back, but embellishment. I think that's why Di Domenico obviously was very upset. With I believe the so. The ice. <clears throat> the other way here is Creighton. Puts one on net. Patrick makes a stop, comes out. Creighton recollects it. Creighton down low, blocked away for the moment by Moran Finnegan. Over to Hunter Hodgson. A buck 11 to go here on this 4 on 4. 2.25 on the game clock. Working down, here's a 2 on 0 chance. Creighton fires, pad save, rebound goes. TJ Avellino on the 4 on 4, picks up the loose change for his seventh of the season, and we're all knotted up at one. An unfortunate break there for Reno Patrick. You mean it's a 2 on 0 and not a normal 2 on 0 that they're standing across from each other. It's a 2 on 0 where they're standing back to back. So it makes the first save, but the rebound just bounces right to the stick. And unfortunate for Reno Patrick as not, defense falls apart on him. Not much you can do there if you're Reno. You make the initial save, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, you come out, you know, not much you can do to get back over. Not much. Almost made an immaculate save on that one, though. So we got four and four regardless, though, for the next minute. Uh, we got 2.18 here on the game clock. <coughs> Here's Kyle Holmes. Looks to clear it forward. Holmes. Across center, he gets collided with Zerner in front of the Kent State bench. And an extra whack from the bench uh, as well during that little melee. Zerner. Tried to go back for Hurst, picked off by Avellino. He's really feeling Avellino comes in dangling through, denied by Byrne. Here's Hurst across center. Now the blue line. Works towards center, shot comes in, deflected high and wide. Zerner applies the pressure, looking to clear. Avellino almost turns it over. Zerner now collects it, turns away. Zerner looking. Zerner down low, 15 seconds on the 4-on-4. Four four. Up high to Nathan Isaac. Isaac holds, fires, glove save by Beck. Zerner. It's getting feisty up in here. I, I expect a third period of either a lot of penalties or a lot of hits. Yes. Hopefully it's option two. Option two is more fun and safer. I believe option one is better, though, if things are getting chippy. Mm, that's true. That's true. I can agree to that one. Because eventually you don't want people stop. getting hurt. Exactly. <coughs> a minute 20 now. Isaac. Couldn't clear. Coming down some speed is Kilway. Kilway coming in and crashes through, but couldn't pull the shot off. Here's Byrne. Ford to Patton. Patton going across, turned over, and now the flashes have numbers. But offsides as Kilway was probably a nice half mile uh, ahead of his teammates on that it one. It did seem like he was very far offsides. A minute six to go, all knotted up at one. It'll be outside the Kent State zone, as expected here. And now and they elect to go to the other side. That was where, where the, the offside was. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I don't know why they were coming over here and begin here. That was where the puck came in, though. <laughs> so maybe that was the original thought. Maybe. One minute to go. One minute remaining. One minute remaining in the second period. 
Thank you, Phil Bachinski. One minute to go. Avellino, forward, backhand, saved by Patrick, goes cleared to the corner. Patton couldn't get around. Avellino up high, fires one off. Zarecki in front, a little shaken up after that play. Skating up high with it is Holmes. Loses the handle. Palumbo will pick it off. Go forward for Reed. If he can get there, he does. Waiting for reinforcements as he gets bodied away. And another couple of checks thrown by Patton and Palumbo. And Patton can backhand that one towards the goal crease. They're going to change. And they're just going to kill the clock here, it seems like. 15 seconds now for Kent State. I don't, you have the momentum. I'm not sure. I think they, they were waiting for a regroup. Maybe. Not a lot of time on the clock. Draper from way out wide fires one five seconds. Here's Holmes. Sends it back, and that'll do it for period number two. All not up at one. Uh, the lone goal in the second period comes off the stick of TJ Avellino. His seventh of the season, assisted by JJ Creighton, moves his point total up to 23 on the season. So... You know, a tightly contested battle as we expected between these two hockey clubs, Andrew. But uh, Kent State, in the last couple minutes, 2-1-0 uh, break. You got to make those shots, and they did. They did. Just after you told me, hey, what can the Colonials do? And I said, did a goal. <laughs> Kent State goes out and does take my advice, and they go out and get a goal. Unfortunate for the Colonials that, you know, they, they give up a goal. Mm. But the Colonials are not out of this. It's a, it's a tight game. The momentum may surely be in Kent State's favor, but it's an intermission. Anything can happen in intermission. You gotta take the you gotta take it back in, during this intermission. As I saw the flashes leaving the ice, Kyle Holmes now bent over uh, on his way to the locker room. So that'll be something to keep an eye on as well as these flashes players starting to drop like flies. It does seem that way. I don't know if they just don't love the, uh, the physical hockey that the Colonials are uh, throwing out there. So the clock is not reset for the moment. Let's see if we can get our stat sheet here from uh, from Connor Borsch possibly here. We'll go through the first period. <coughs> it was RMU 14, Kent 16. Second, RMU 32, Kent 28. Okay. So taking the lead in shots was the Colonials in that second period. And it looks from the looks of it, Alejandro Pood leads the way for the Colonials with four shots on net. As for the flash is Jonathan Gabriel what a shocker on that one. Uh, has five total shots. So they're going to announce the winners of the 50-50 and raffles and all that. We're going to step aside. We'll be back for the third period between Kent State and RMU right after this. Third period of action between the Kent State Golden Flashes and the RMU Colonials here on the Clearview Ice Arena. Caden McCrory and Andrew Keel on the call here. It's 1-1. A very tightly contested matchup. It wasn't always that way, though. With about three minutes on the clock, a 2-1-0 for Kent State. They capitalized. J.J. Creighton on the assist. The goal going to T.J. Avellino. But, man, this third period, it's going to be hard hitting. It's going to be crucial. These guys are riled up, and it's going to be a fun third period. I believe so. I think... This is definitely going to be either a lot less chippy or it's going to be a lot more chippy. And we're going to either see a lot of penalties or none at all, I believe. So here we go. Puck is down for period three. And behind the net, Ragno strips it to Hurst, working around, firing out of the net, comes back high over the glove side. Up high to Hurst. Seats it off to Byrne. Byrne fires from out wide with a deflection. Loose. Where is it? Zerner jabbing. And right in there is the referee to break it up, three of them to be exact. They are really trying to avoid any extra pushing and shoving. Extra pushes on him, so maybe he's calmed down a little bit. Rebounds, loosen it, it'll go! Corbin, Ragno on the backhand, loose in front. Oh, what a goal from Corbin Ragno. He had to fire it onto him early in the second, and he's gonna break the tie in this one. Two to one, RMU. I said about halfway through, maybe three-fourths away through that period, Corbin Ragno had a firecracker under him. He was, ki he was kicking everything. He was pushing everyone. He was hitting anything that moved. And he, he gets what he deserves there as he gets the goal to give the Colonials the lead on that one. To London Bridge, 2-1 to one RMU, Ragno's fifth of the season. Colonials are going to come in early with a lead. 
and let's see if they can try to expand on this one. Back's gonna leave it off. Falkowski turned over. Colombo up high to Patton, trying to play it down low. Turned over to Falkowski, looking to turn away to Avellino. He has some room, she hit away by Patton, eventually cleared. The goal officially reads Ragnar's fifth of the season, assist to number 19, Big Z, David Zerner. I said at the end of that period that the momentum, while it was fully in Kent State's fashion at the end of that period, it's, a, it's an intermission, so things can change. And guess what? They do. The Colonials come out, and they've been strong so far this period as another big hit there. Sheramonti laying the body down. And he's been physical all night long. And here's Patton. Puts it through center, bouncing puck. Macker, excuse me, Sheramonti, backhand. Back makes it something. He gets thrown hard into the wall, and that's going to be called. And they're going to get the medic out there. That is an ugly scene as Cher Monty got body slammed WWE style into those end boards. He does look okay now, back up on his feet. As the band is gonna shout sit, I believe. Shame, shame. 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 The 17 from Kent State, so not the greatest of uh, comparisons there. Ragno the hot hand with Hurst up high. Draper in front of the net. Uh, that'll be Garrett Walker and David Zerner playing down low. Zerner. Wrestling away. Walker in to help. He'll come out with it. <coughs> Up high to Hurst. Hurst. Walker fires right into the bread basket. Draper gets pushed into the net. And now some pushing and shoving. Draper mixed in. Or excuse me, Zerner was tied in uh, behind the play down low. Weber, so we have a lot going on here. Weber was locked in there. Throw a fake punch at him. That's something you don't want to see. A little bit of those fake punches that you see that you do in like elementary school where you get a half inch from their face and then you pull back. So that could be something that, I don't know, what if we see more of that later on. I feel like it started out pretty clean, nothing was gonna happen, and then Beck tried to trip a player in front after the whistle, and it's looking like it's getting chippy again. Top unit, I, or I would say maybe top unit, the power plays have been mixed up quite a bit as well. Hodgson, Finnegan, Reed, Palumbo, and Macrocostas, the power play unit. Reed off to Palumbo, off has to touch up. Now they're good, and can go in to on the attack. Hodgson hands away, pick, picks it forward to Palumbo. Reed goes out wide. Falkowski quick to turn it back in. A minute five to go, 17:38 on the clock in this third period of play. Right to Falkowski again. The power play just not getting the right passes, the right looks that they want. And Kent State will just keep clearing. As they do right there on the net of Reno Patrick. <coughs> Finnegan going to take his time. Walker <coughs> has some speed. He's going to go out wide. Entering the zone, Walker. Chips behind the net. Macrocostas. Wanted to leave it off for Hodgson. Miscommunication. That'll be cleared out. Once again, Reno out of his net, under 30, left on the power play clock. Zarecki heads the bench along with Mitch Gillespie. Finnegan leaves this one off as Army's just going to take their good old time here. That's now Hurst pulling the Kramer. He's going to take it all the way. Hurst with some speed coming in behind the net, holding, goes up high. Di Domenico to Walker. Walker top of the blue line. Switching spots, fires one in, rebound for Zerner was not there, and Beck gets a little whack on Macrocostas in front of the goal crease. And Beck with another jab in front. And now some wrestling between Zerner and another flash player. Rebound is loose off the shot of Macrocostas, and now Zerner was trying to wrestle away from a flash player holding on to him, and will get a whistle dead, as now Zerner will get a little slash from Jonathan Gabriel as the two mammoths collide right before the Kent State bench. Yeah. No, the smart thing is, no, no, no. We can't lose this offensive zone draw right now. Yeah. We just let up a goal. We need this. Yep. There's a bunch of good opportunities there on multiple rebounds. Could I'm have been a good chance to score that. I'm surprised nothing snuck through the uh, the brick wall of Beck on that play. So it's some speed coming down Purdue. Hard into the wall along with Matt Parker. And Parker, very slow to get up. He eventually does. He's going to make his way off the ice. We haven't called his name a lot, so short ice time and trying to make a name for himself as Beck's out of the net. Zerner throws in front, no Colonial home, and the stick goes flying out of the hands of 
I don't know whose stick that 27, was. 27, yeah, Gabriel. 27, Gabriel. I was looking around trying to see where the, the, uh, the laundry was going. But Gabriel's stick goes flying, I think, by his own player's doing as well. I disagree. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot I of sticks it. in there. I saw it. I don't remember the number, but it was definitely a Colonial on a flyby. Here's Reed. Has some room. Goes through center trying to find Patton. Couldn't connect. Zarecki throws it on that Patrick. Throws it behind to Purdue. Pass to Patton. Gets it out of the zone. Reed wasn't there. Ends up finishing his hit on Robbie Sherman. <coughs> Di Domenico. Loses it. Shot comes in, goes wide in the net off the stick of Nick Creston. Palumbo along the wall holding. Leaves it out for Reed, clears it for the moment. Reed will head off along with, oh, Palumbo's going to stop for a moment. Pavey picks off the pass. He does. Here he comes. Palumbo across. Fanning, Walker, Patton scores. Sean Patton, showman, 3-2 RMU. What a game for Sean Patton as he picks up the loose change and just flips it over the shoulder of Beck. Barely getting that one in, but just enough, and it's three, two Colonials. Second of the game, fifth on the season. Even if you're feeling it, there's a lot of loose change around Beck these last couple of shifts. And finally, the Colonials find the back, and then who else but the showman, Sean Patton. It was a very weird play as Walker was going to try and shoot it, gets off, loses his balance. Pat just picks it up right off his stick and is going to flip that one over. A very weird goal. Turned over. Here's Zarecki. Goes across. Down low is Avellino. Gets bodied away. Up high to the point. Shot coming in. Rebounds loose. Eventually cleared. Out of the zone. Sheramansi had a break and couldn't get there. The goal officially reads Patton second of the game, fifth of the season from Gio Palumbo and Garrett Walker to make it 3-2 Colonials. Kind of surprised they gave Walker the, the secondary in that one. I feel like he, it should be the other way around. It should be uh, Patton from Walker and Palumbo. That's what but, I was thinking. But, I mean, they get the points anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. We know it in our hearts it was Walker first <laughs> and then Palumbo, but hey, points are points. Helps Palumbo inch closer to the 100-point mark. Can't complain. If you're Gio. Not at all. Makes a 3-2 game. Colonials back on top in this one. Turning away with this one is Oster Shell. Moves this along the wall, gloved away by Lucchese Moran, battling for it by himself as he gets hit and whacked by a couple flashes. Now here comes the mammoth of Gabriel. Gabriel blocked away by Hodgson. Moves this along the wall to Macrocostas. Through to neutral territory and sent right back in. 6.23 to go. Hodgson, quick up to Macrocostas. Dangling around, has some room to work with. Macrocostas has some speed, entering the zone. Fires one in, wide of the net. Now the other way, the flash has got four coming. Four on three, back is Macrocostas to even the numbers. Sherman goes across, Macrocostas with the body. Takes his man down. It'll exit. Macrocostas again getting in the body in there. We've seen clean plays from Macrocostas as behind the play takes an extra whack. I was going to say, Macrocostas is really holding his own with clean on time plays. And there's a reverse from Hodgson, uh, or in Ragno. And now Hodgson and Macrocostas each throw a couple extra daggers along the Colonial bench. Very, uh, very late were those hits. Yes. So, but I guess refs were like, well, they both went both ways, so we're not going to call it. Entering the zone, shot coming in, blocked by Finnegan. And he can clear. Kent State was changing, luckily, for RMU to avoid the icing. Forwards changing. Shot come in blocked by Finnegan. Hodgson to Reed. Hodgson hit behind the play. Puck exits with some speed. Patton trying to pick it off. He's really feeling it. As now avoiding a hit was TJ Avellino. And, or I'm sorry, that was JJ Creighton who takes an extra slash as he was taken down. Here's Reed at center. Forward to Palumbo. He has room. Palumbo comes in off the skate. Rebound to Patton. Goes for Reed deflected towards the net. And wide Zarecki looks to clear. Reed finishing his body. Coming up is Di Domenico. Pokes it along the wall off the glove of Colburn as Di Domenico uh, behind the play was uh, involved. You know, a guy that was maybe going to be scratched. You know, a couple injuries early on to some guys and Logis being on vacation. Put Patton in the lineup. 
and now he's really making the most of it. Here's a shot in front, and it'll go. Connor Moran on the doorstep makes it four to two Colonials, and RMU expanding their lead here on Charity Night. Thanks to Connor Moran. Don't like to put blame on other people, but Brian Ostershell loses an edge, and it's get and, and, and unable to pick up the puck. Puck's just sitting there. Walker picks it up, right goes skates right past Ostershell's body while he's lying on the ice, passes it right out front to Moran, and two goal lead for the Colonials. Moran's sixth of the season. He's another sneaky good player we've talked about coming up in the goal columns. Man, these young depth guys are really starting to establish themselves. Patton, Moran, Walker once again with a primary assist. Really feeling it right now for these Colonials. Purdue throws it in back out of his crease. You got to start to wonder here, Andrew, if Kent State's going to get a little more physical of when they get back out of this goal crease. I feel like they will be. And if you're looking at the right time, it's probably about the two minute mark. That's when you're going to start to see uh, Beck leave his crease. Might even see him go a little early, depending on how aggressive you want to be. Sharon Monty got bodied behind the play there. Little uh, tough play. Coming down, Lucchese shot. Purdue takes away. Patrick makes the stop. And some little pushing and shoving, but nothing too crazy. 3.48 to go. They got to, you know, not take the perfect play. Get the shots in front. Here's a shot from up high. Sailing wide of Patrick and exiting the zone. Here's now Corbin Ragno entering. Ragno started the scoring here in this third period for both sides, making it 2-1 Colonials. Now puts us at 4-2. Preston plays it in off burn. As flyby, Ragno gets a body on that one of Tommy Kilway. Sent in into the far corner, chasing down his Kilway against Byrne. Taken down to the ice is Kilway, losing his stick, goes back to Falkowski. Offsides are the flashes as Kilway, a little slow to his feet on that one. Creston just had to dump and chase it. Ragno goes across the burn. Colonials. Wisely just killing a little bit of this clock down and taking their time moving forward. Light pressure from Kent State means you can buy the time since they were changing behind the play. Zerner to burn. Reed bodies away Zerner. Back to Nathan Isaac. Forward to Patton. Skies this one in. Off the stick of Falkowski. Beautifully drawn play from six and white. Patton. Defense for Kent State. Look to move forward. They'll sky this through center. Burn is all. Oh, he lost that one. Here comes Zarecki, comes out wide, saved by Patrick. Clearing attempt from Isaac, bouncing puck off of Sherman. Patton has time and can clear this out of harm's way. As Back out of the net. 2.18 to go, very early for this Kent State team. Patrick. I said oh. two minutes. Yeah, you did. Zarecki gets bodied away. The puck rolls up high, shot blocked away. Rolls out. Patton. Looks to go, it doesn't have enough on it. And it'll be no icing. Palumbo waving off as the defense is changing. Under two minutes to go. You gotta feel in the back of the mind of Sean Patton. He wants this, he wants the Hattie. I think he wanted it on that shot right there. That would have been something. Here comes Avellino out wide. Stripped away by Patton getting back. Gillespie moves in front. Palumbo looks to clear, he got it to center ice. A minute 40 to go. In this one, RMU leading 4-2. Reed finishes the check, clearing attempt, and that'll go wide of the net, and that'll be an icing as that line will be stuck on as Hodgson wanted the empty cage. Just a little too far. Just a little too far left on the shot as we're running out of time for Kent State, and time is not in their favor, but they are going to catch their breath with this timeout. So timeout, Kent State. Andrew, let's play Let's play the uh, play pretend here. Coach Kent State, what are you drawing up? I think you're drawing, if you're Kent, uh, this is tough. I think you're going to put it's tough. one person directly in front, another person high in the slot. I say Gabriel in front. You can't have a 6'6 six, six guy. You can't teach that. Yeah, Why that's not? hard. And then I think you put the two guys in front and you run an umbrella. Okay. Two, two screens in front of Patrick, and then you got your umbrella. Have the, middle, have the guy kind of higher up in the slot, move around more, and have your guy in the crease just kind of stick his, stick his butt right in Patrick's face. All right, let's go in the mind of Coach Joseph for the RMU. You know, I would say penalty kill technically. You know, you down a guy. So what, what's in the mind, do you think, of the Colonials? I think their mind, I know this is kind of a risky play, but maybe take a penalty. If you take a penalty, you can ice it. Hmm. 
I know you're down 6 bad. 4 then. I know, that's not an idea. But I mean, you can ice and kill a lot that's of an clock idea. then. I don't, I'm not necessarily opposed. Off a of draw, Moran goes for the clear at the top of the line. Walker. I think RMU got away with one here because that was an icing. And they have a fresh new unit on. You can make a change on a, you can? Uh, on a timeout. Okay. Even if it was off an icing. In fact, I learned that stat during our road trip to PSP. Oh, that's something I just learned. So uh, we we're all learning together here <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. I was going to say, wait a minute, RMU does not have the right unit out. One minute, one minute to go. Creighton turned over. Sheramonti for the MTK. He got it. Anthony Sheramonti puts the icing on the McFlurry to make it a 5-2 lead for the Colonials. And that will be, you, you said it perfectly, the icing on the McFlurry for this one. The cherry on top of the cake. Your bacon and eggs and your uh, McGriddle. It's, it's pretty much over here. Three goal lead with just under a minute left. Beck's going to go in the crease. And I think we're done here, pretty much. Put that butt on that Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Monty's fourth of the year, the empty netter, 5-2 Colonials. Sarah Monty with the dagger, unassisted goal, 45 seconds. And now the Colonials, I think at this point, you just got to play to uh, not get hurt. <laughs> I and for say. the second time this game, I'm seeing number 11, Trevor Kohlberg, on the ice. It's good to see Kohlberg. I know he's, they're trying to get him more playing time. It's now Draper and Lucchese uh, with some pushing and shoving just behind the blue line. Patrick will head to the bench. There will be a penalty against Lucchese. Finnegan sends that one in. Beck comes out and will touch up. 20 seconds to go. Lucchese will head to the box. RMU will have a power play. The last little bit is Lucchese and Draper. Uh, Draper does a little flyby and says, all right, see ya, <laughs> as he heads to the bench. But interference call, 20 seconds to go, Andrew. You can kill it, you can score. Regardless of what you got to do here, it's a very tall hill to climb. Very. For Penn State to somehow score uh, three goals shorthanded with only 20 seconds. Almost six seconds per, uh, per goal is it's what Kent State needs. It's doable. I mean, we'll see. Here's Zerner. I'd be surprised if the Colonials even shoot the puck once. Walker up front to Patton. Patton was looking for it at the blue line, taken down from behind is Hurst as he will meet along the wall with Kilway. Patton with a reverse hit on six, and here we go. Patton gets wrestled down by Weber, and what a way to end a phenomenal night. Call that a fight if you want for Sean Patton as gloves flying off the hands of Austin Weber as he is not thrilled with a fellow number six, but uh, lucky for Sean Patton. Uh, two goals will offset that one and a W. As Hunter Hudson got thrown <laughs> to the ice on a, a body slam by his own teammate on that one. There will be penalties, obviously, to, to Patton and, uh, yes. and Weber <laughs> for good reason. But uh, you want to call it? He didn't get an assist, so it's like, man, I can say that's the Gordie Howe of club hockey yeah. hat trick, yeah. <laughs> I guess. The closest you're going to get. I mean, yeah. of course, without the assist. If he gets the assist, that's probably the closest you can get. Yeah. So let's get our final shot totals from this hockey contest. It does seem like RMU is going to win the shot totals 44 to 35. So a, a big margin after being down in the first period to almost having 10 over Kent State. Kent State gets serenaded off the ice by some Colonial faithful. And for Colonial Faithful, you got to be really happy. Uh, a couple tough games on the road against Delaware and hockey superstars on the or watching your game. Iceberg, Ryan Mill, you have a man, a plethora of just a bunch of variety of different people in this building, and the band as well. As we show them about to get um, play the RMU anthem for these Colonials. There we go. I was gonna say we were ready for now. a couple pictures there. Yeah, a couple pictures from uh, Josh Miltier. Make sure to give him a follow, Jay Miltier Photography. See the photos from after the, the game. But for these Colonials, a hard fought battle with a win column W against these flashes is much needed. It was a much needed win and an, an upset, if you can say so. I mean, kind of, yeah. Colonials have a losing record and uh, Kent State is 11 and five. It moves us up to seven and eight. Two and two in divisional play, which is 500, which is where you want to be probably mm -hmm. around now, especially since you uh, 
lost to two top dogs in John Carroll and uh, IEP. And as I said at the beginning, the winner of this game will jump the other in the standings. Yes. And with that, RMU is now ahead of Kent in divisional play. I believe that puts them third. And I know it's a little far out to talk about playoff hockey, but like I said, you want to avoid IUP as much as humanly possible yes. until that final game. That's what RMU somehow got away with last year. Just a little bit of luck. But uh, finishing second or third is where you want to be for, for RMU in the final standings. So you know, first probably not out of reach entirely, but not likely. Yes. So you know you got to play it, play these games the best of your ability. Take down Kent. Take down West Virginia. Take down Mercyhurst. Maybe split with John Carroll is more than likely. They're probably going to split with Kent if I'm going to assume so. Kent's a hard-fought team. Obviously, they had a couple injuries that, that uh, weren't, you know, helping their case out very well, including uh, Eric Hambling, who did not play tonight. And, and then, of course, our top goal Jack scorer. Kinsman. And Jack Kinsman. That's obviously going to put a, a little bit of a dent in his uh, production point per game, even though it's not really his fault. He only played one shift. Yeah. So hopefully Acha just says he was a scratch and keep his, P keep his PPG where it needs to be. Yes. <laughs> Colonials will gather for a team photo. Uh, similar to the Scott Sterling, they carried Blake Lowe just onto the ice for this <laughs> picture. <laughs> and they'll set him up. I'm trying to see where he is in this. He's in the back, I think. As he's hobbling. Yeah, they're pretty much yes. Scott Sterling. you got to hold me up yeah. for, for this photo. And then, what a remarkable game. Of course, we come away unscathed from fighting, kind of. Eh, kind of. Kind of. For the most part. Nothing that was uh, stream taken down worthy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we see the, the final picture of them in their jerseys before they will take them off and give them off more than likely to uh, parents, uh, friends, to wear, wash, hopefully, because they're <laughs> not going to smell yes. great at all. But uh, overall, a great job here tonight from these Colonials. Great job from the crowd showing up. Hopefully we'll get the final number, um, probably not now, but at some point of how much money they did raise. They're going to salute Dr. Patrick and Dr. Locke, the president and the uh, – President of sports, pretty much, of yeah. RMU. Yeah. Pretty much that's his title. <laughs> Before they will now take their jerseys off and give them away, Andrew. Hopefully, uh, did you bid on one? I did not. I did not bid on one this year. Let, let the parents get them, of course. Yes. That's, that's how this is meant to go. We can keep them, just wash them, hang them up. Yeah. But in the end, Andrew, as all times traditions do, three stars of the game. All right. I was thinking this, and... You tell me, if you would have asked me this at the beginning of the third period, I think my list would have been entirely different. Okay. For my three, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a, a little bit of out out of the way. I'm going to go Nick Beck. Okay. I Played like that Played great. One. 44 mm -hmm. shots against. Makes 39 saves on the night. Pretty good uh, pretty good night for him. Number two, I'm going to go Corbin Ragno. I think we'll say 40 because uh, empty netter. Oh, uh, technically 40. Yes, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Corbin Ragno at two. The firecracker. I still would have given him a top three, even if he didn't score today. But he scores and pu and moves himself further up in my uh, top three stars. And number one, is it any doubt, it's Sean Patton. Yeah. Two goals and looked strong doing so. Had a lot of shifts and a lot of plays that he did really good on. All right, I'll do Caden's three stars here. I'll go Reno Patrick's my number three. I think he did really swell in that bounce back couple of rough goes. Number two, I'm going to go Connor Moran. Obviously, I can't pick the same as you, but Moran, another solid showing out of uh, out of him. And number one, I'm going off the board here. It's the RMU fans. The RMU fans showed out really well tonight, both on the stream, in the stands, having, you know, setting up this event. You guys did one hell of a job. Good job, guys. Hopefully, we raise a lot of money for Ronald McDonald House. But your final score here tonight, RMU 5, Kent State 2. From our whole crew here, Andrew Keel, Cade McCrory, we'll see you tomorrow night. Well, afternoon-ish. 4 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, sorry. 6 o'clock start for uh, a championship rematch between Cal U and RMU in the Division Four pool play. We'll see you guys then.